All right, welcome to all of you to this new webinar organized by the Global Supply Chain Council in partnership with ESCR. Today's topic is on how source to pay automation helps align supply chain strategies in APAC. So we're very happy again to have uh, this uh, discussion going on today in partnership with our technology uh, you know, pro provider ESCR. And uh, we saw this webinar again is going to be interactive. If you have any questions uh, for the speakers, you can ask uh, at any time during the presentation uh, by just clicking on the Q&A button located at the bottom right corner of your screen. We will take your questions at uh, you know between uh, properly the presentations, and we will prioritize uh, those uh, questions as well during our discussion. Uh, this event is again going to be uh, just 55 minutes. So if you're worried about your time, uh, you know, don't worry, it will be over by 5 p.m. Hong Kong, Singapore. So stay with us, especially towards the end as we get uh, all your questions. Today, we're joined by uh, three speakers who are going to be sharing their insight and their experience. Uh, we have Charlie Chi, uh, who is Managing Director for Asia uh, at ESCA, based in Singapore. He will also be joined uh, by uh, Jonathan Paul, who is the Enterprise Sales and Account Specialist at Market Dojo, which is also an ESCAR uh, company. And they also have invited uh, one of our top, uh, one of our key customers, Jesse Cock, uh, who is the Director of Finance and Business Analysis at Swinburne University of Technology based in Malaysia. So very glad again to have uh, some uh, speakers and we're looking forward uh, for the discussion. And I'd like to welcome first uh, Charlie uh, to join us. Hi, Charlie, how are you? Hi, hi. Uh, thank you for introducing me, Max. Uh, and a very good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the webinar. Yeah. Thank you. So go ahead. Uh, we, are, we, we are all here to you, for you to hear you. All right. So thank you for having me again. So um, in the interest of time, I will dive in a bit. I'd like to share about uh, the market trends and challenges in the Asia Pacific. So what are the top challenges facing CPOs, uh, Chief Procurement Officer last year, this year, and also moving forward? So what we are seeing, um, if you're looking at the screen right now, um, on your right uh, left-hand side, the, the most biggest challenges, I would say the top two, uh, the one, the highest will be the inflation. Yeah. And second, resourcing, the talent for the uh, procurement side of things. Yeah. And these are uh, from international report uh, study. And what we're also seeing a trend uh, is basically in the procurement professions. Uh, a lot and lot more, the procurement professionals are reporting to the finance, into the area of the CFO. Yeah, and this trend, this trend has uh, been shifting and it's been quite apparent since 2018. Yeah, and we are seeing this and some of you may be wondering why procurement is into the finance. Yeah, so the reason is because uh, there is a, a, a common path and companies like to be more efficient in, in that perspective. Yeah, there is a 16% move in terms of uh, the trend that is shifting. This is the highest among all the other business functions. And these are quite, uh, how would I say, to quite common, right? Uh, this is happening. And we're also seeing uh, a very interesting trend that's happening in the market that most of the sourcing activity is happening in APEC. Yeah, a, criti a, critical, success, a critical factor why this is happening is mainly due to the growth, the GDP growth in this region. Yeah, the emerging market and the developing economics. You will see 55% for South Southeast Asia plus East Asia. That combined is coming close to 80%. Yeah. And the latest uh, in, in International Monetary Fund is forecasting that Asia will continue to grow 20% 20, 20 faster than the rest of the world. Yeah. Uh, however, saying that uh, there is still a lot of factor that's happening today. I think if you're looking at the next uh, uh, chart, uh, one of the reasons why these are moving is basically geographical risk, right? Uh, the order of the political uh, situation, the war that is happening, the uh, ten economic tension between China, US, the Israel-Palestine war, the Ukraine war. So things are moving from the European market, uh, the US market, and most of the sourcing activity 
especially talent as well, are more focused on APAC. Yeah. However, having said this, uh, there's no denying uh, every industry, sector, and company operates on different requirements. Yeah. So it may vary, but in general, this is what we are seeing. Yeah. And Asia Pacific will remain a growth uh, oriented region. And we will continue to see those sourcing activities will continue to be central uh, to be more epic center. The Asia Pacific will be the epic center of these sourcing activities. And in line with that, uh, thanks to Gartner, they have actually looked at the what are the priorities, yeah, uh, the top 10 priority for the sourcing as well as procurement activities. And you're looking right now, I have actually out of the 10, uh, it's in shaded in red or in the red box. There are actually seven of them. What we see that is very much technology driven. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying that the rest, the visions, the model, operating model, and the people are not technology driven. They are. Uh, more subtly, but the, the, the other seven is very clearly uh, you need tools, yeah, automation tools, uh, AI to be able to help you yeah, to focus on these top 10 priorities. And we are talking about what are those activities we are talking about, yeah, the focus on uh, source to pay. Uh, you hear the keyword sourcing strategy, yeah, strategic sourcing. So we are looking at um, across the board. Companies are more focused uh, in, in according to this research, uh, where procurement strategy is important. Uh, the technology is uh, is equally important. Yeah, the organization how this been shared, whether it's operating in silo in the uh, shared service environment or a GBS environment. How do you then measure all this performance? Yeah, tracking all your spend. Where is where are those sourcing activities? Is it happening in APAC, uh, which should be the clear vendor, for example? And as well as managing a supplier, yeah. What we see is no longer much a vendor, supplier, and a customer relationship, buyer relationship. is more of business partnership, yeah. How do you manage this relationship to bring it to the next level? And as well, managing risk, yeah. Uh, in terms of logistic, in terms of tariff, in terms of the geopolitics, yeah. Where are your backup resources? Where are your backup suppliers? Yeah. So all this basically. In line with what we shared earlier, you require tools. Yeah, gone are the days these are been managed manually. Yeah, in the past is most probably localized in your country in a specific region. Today, sourcing are going global, so you may be based in a specific country in a different region, but sourcing in APAC, for example. So you really need tools, uh, applications, and automations to really help you on that. What we are also seeing is the role is also changing. Yeah. So in the past, I think it's very common. I think most of you, uh, procurement professionals, when I heard this thing called P2P. S2P is become the lingo. What we are seeing, and thanks to Gartner, who actually remap this. Now it's more commonly called S2P, source to pay, instead of just procure to pay. Yeah. So what's the difference? So on the screen, you will see a, a quick summary comparison. Uh, S2P is talking about more strategic instead of just transactional. Yeah, It's more end-to-end -end instead of just focusing on operation or, for example, manufacturing only. Source to pay is across the organization. Yeah, It's more end-to-end. -end. Uh, it's more focused on collaboration rather than transaction. Supplier-buyer relationship. Now it's focusing more on business partner relationship. Obviously, cost saving. That's uh, profitability driven organizations, yeah, and you will need now more analytical, yeah, uh, based on data, the data that you have, where is your, who is your top 10 supplier, who is your strategic supplier, yeah, how much are you spending with them, what kind of uh, discount or competitive pricing you are getting compared to the market, so you really need to, and thanks to automations, thanks to AI, this is now possible. And the earlier two slides or three slides, I talk about more and more procurement people reporting to the finance organization. Yeah. So you see, actually, uh, it's actually subtly been there, but it's just more visible today. On your left, you will see the key goals of the CFO, the finance typically. And on your right, you will see the goals of procurement. What is interesting, what is the middle, right? That both share common value. It's the bottom line. 
is the profitability and cost optimizations. So it only makes perfect sense that these are now being merged, right? And being, it's a powerful couple in, in that perspective. You will most probably hear as well a lot of uh, talk about the office of the CFO. Yeah. So no longer just the, the finance is no longer just talking about reporting PL, quarterly closing, year end closing, audit. It's more than that. Yeah. So today the coverage including an element of IT, yeah, an element of ESG. And it's not surprising, procurement is also moving in that direction. Yeah. So definitely something that is really emerging. And we see this across not only just in the market, in my current customer space, we really seeing the CFO is taking more. And that does not mean there is no more role for the CFO. Yeah. The CPO, the Chief Procurement Officer role remains. Just that now, it's been slowly merged and the finance is taking more of a key lead role. What is the spend uh, that we're talking about moving from P2P into S2P, right? So you will see three layer or uh, vertically, the strategic, the operation, and the transaction, transactional. In a P2P environment, the focus is more on trans transactional. So you will hence see the pyramid, yeah? Where most of the activities are taken there, operational about 30% of things, yeah? Strategic is only about 20%. And if you move along with tools, you know, empowered by tools, automations, AI, ideally, you should be moved into the digital, the end of the equation, where strategic is 60% of the time, where professionals should be spending their time looking at data, analyzing and deriving strategy, how to benefit organization. And that means 10% transactional. It's the inverse of the pyramid. Yeah. So we are seeing this movement. Some companies are... Most companies are already in the middle, yeah? Whether it's uh, semi-manual or fully automated, but the goal is to really reach the end where you've got a 60, 30, 10, yeah? 60% strategic, operational, only 30%, and transactional should be only 10%, yeah? I, I think all of us been in the industry, uh, working as a professional, I think transactional, transactional the game data is least of our appetite, yeah? And I don't see, uh, honestly, from my perspective, there's much career growth or career advancement when we are talking about data entry. Yeah. So why S2P? Right? S2P uh, bringing actually much more value to the organization, being uh, a strategic initiative in an organization. The market has evolved, right? So I think uh, program professionals should not be just depending on ERP, right? Even though you have the tools in the ERP, that are not necessarily the best of breed. And, and it doesn't necessarily fit your business operation. Yeah. So we see that companies adopting uh, automation solution or third party solution that are best of breed, right? And it should also bring an element of uh, the future, not only just what's in the past, what's current, but be able to help you to, to reach in the next two, three years, where do you want to go? Yeah. It brings you competitive edge. And obviously, on the business side, bringing efficiency, uh, be able to help you to streamline your process, and definitely access to data where you can see across the board all the KPIs of the organization. And more, more importantly, what's the business value? Yeah, it brings from the finance perspective. Uh, remember, just now we have the, the, the slides where we have a powerful couple. Yeah, it brings all these benefits. Yeah, the improve on profitability, be able to see performance both. Uh, individually, as a department, as, as a company, yeah, uh, re really have more money to spend, uh, not really the case, right, you should be spending less by bringing more value. And obviously, on the procurement side, you'll be able to centralize data. Uh, it has been, unfortunately, the case. A, a lot of investment typically are more in the business side, in the finance, procurement not necessarily have, having the maximum investment. So to today, with strategic sourcing and become critical, you need more automations, you need uh, tools to be able to centralize your data, be able to analyze, yeah? And in complying with ESG, which is a big and hot topic today, more and more organization, you are complying to be uh, in complying with ESG. And obviously, I spoke about being in a business partner collaboration, not a buyer-supplier relationship, yeah? 
So what you see here right next is basically the S2P landscape. So I'm not going to dive in. I think all of us uh, been in the procurement uh, world knows about this. What is a requisition? What is a purchase order? Delivery order. Yeah. But these are basically the fundamental uh, business, high level business process flow of all the uh, respective activities that needs to be done. So how to align? Having said so much about the importance of uh, sourcing, being a strategic initiative in an organization, right? And is in terms of the supply chain, is one on the upstream. Yeah, sourcing is the the, the upstream of this supply chain uh, management part of things. So I'm happy to share, um, Eska, us here being today sharing the what our perspective is. We have offering on the uh, what we call ESCO on demand, our cloud solutions. And uh, on the S2P side, on the wheel, you will see that we have most of the solution that we're able to bring you the full end-to-end -end cycle of it. Starting from sourcing, supplier management, be able to manage your contract yeah, with your supplier. Procurement, that's more the in, uh, perhaps the indirect purchases. yeah, And obviously, once you source, you issue a purchase order, um, eventually you receive the goods and services, you will need to pay your business partner. Yeah, So that's where accounts payable comes in. And to complete the loop, the expense management for all those uh, indirect spend or your employee expenses. Obviously, on the other hand, on the right-hand side, you the invoice to cash. And I'm proud to say Esker is the only one in the world uh, that is offering both cycle, uh, S2P, as well as invoice to cash uh, on a single platform. So what typically company do when they want to do automations? Yeah. So what I'm looking at is what are the specific steps to take yeah, before source to pay automation can begin. So are you ready for automations? How do you assess your organization readiness? So one of the things is firstly, you need to take, step, take stock or really actually uh, identify your current process, right? What is working, what is not working? And what can you standardize? What do you need to change? Is it the change management uh, where it's very important in any success uh, outcome of any automation project? What can you standardize right? between countries or between your departments? Next, please. Then we talk about engaging your stakeholders. So any investment, uh, especially in automations, you need a budget, right? Also, you need uh, your stakeholders, your management, your senior management, uh, and some company needs the board of directors approval. So you need to engage this, right? And any realignment of your process, uh, changes of your systems, you need to also manage change management. And a lot of time, uh, a lot of organization that we see uh, in some of customer, uh, this is really underestimated. Yeah, the value of change management within your organization. Right. Having the best grid of tool may not necessarily bring in the right result if you don't implement the right change management. Next, please, Max. Uh, two more slides to go on this. Also talking about what are the data that you have been capturing today? How can we integrate? How many systems do you have? Right. And uh, what are the processes you have so that we can integrate and streamline into a central platform like Esca? where you can actually uh, interface with multiple system and central in Zesca as the main key dashboard for all your tracking and KPI tracking. Yeah. So you need to assess where are the source of your data, right? Because at the end of the day, we need data to work to bring the right result. All right. Next, please, Max. And uh, obviously timeline availability of your resource because solution can be implemented it also requires participation and involvement of your team in your organization who knows your business process the best. So likely who is your, you need to identify all your available key resources and ability to be able to participate in this project and need to be aligned with your other important activities in your organization. For example, your half yearly closing, your yearly closing, your stock takes. Yeah. So all this needs to be ready to be assessed. Are you ready? Right, so all this needs to be put in place before we can really kickstart the project. Next, please. So that's a, a quick overview of uh, to assess your readiness. 
So we mentioned about AI, and I, I believe uh, outside of this forum today, most of you have been hearing AI as the buzzword of today. Yeah. So what's the role of AI? How can that help? Next, please. So in Esca, we our, so all our solution is embedded with AI, right? Um, the marketing technology is called Esca Synergy, right? Layman, I will say it is a transparent AI, right? You can't see it, you can touch it, but it's embedded, right? So basically, uh, today by default, all our solution has it embedded with AI, and what we are saying is let AI do all the transactional work, do all the analytical data entry as much as possible, right? The professionals, the valuable uh, resources, right? Should be focusing on analytical and driving strategy, right? So this is a glimpse of what is being embedded and actually there is more, and we have a lot of pattern uh, through our AI that is registered and owned by ASCA, right? In fact, uh, not in the slide that you are seeing right now is we embedded chat GPT in there as well, yeah. All right, next please. All right, so um, I'm at the end of what I'd like to share today. So there is uh, invited one of my customers, uh, Swimburn, an imperial brand, to share with you uh, some success story uh, that you can perhaps bring some uh, visibility and experience to be shared uh, with all of you. So I will hand over to John uh, from uh, Esker, uh, from Marco Dojo, is an Esker company, to talk about Imperial brand. Yeah, that they have implemented as a so, uh, sourcing solution. Over to you, John. Thanks very much, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, yeah, and uh, thank you, John. Uh, maybe before we jump into John's uh, presentation, uh, we had a poll as well, Charlie, okay. that you wanted to uh, to use, right? Yes, yes. Sorry, I, I, I overlooked that. Um, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so yeah, we have to just do a quick poll before the, uh, the case study sharing. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can uh, play the poll, uh, then go ahead, and then we can gonna get you uh, everybody yeah. to to respond to that. Yeah. So we we appreciate if everyone can take a few minutes to respond to the poll. Uh, it will give us a a good insight and sharing as well where these things are happening and what's your thought as well. So the question okay. is, what are the top challenges your organization faces in the source to pay process? So please click I uh, have time consuming manual, lack of visibility, inefficient, uh, inefficient workflows, post supply collaboration, and uh, a problem with data. So if you can click on whatever you know it relates uh, to the challenge that you face, it would be great. So then we, uh, we're, we're going to let you respond and then uh, we're going to move on to John's uh, presentation. Okay, so take your time and then after the case study, maybe we can uh, show the result and then we can comment on it. Right. So it's a multiple choice. Uh, you can take more than one or you can select all of the above. Yeah. So it's not you're not restricted to only one choice, uh, multiple choice. Yeah. Thanks, Charlie. Okay, John, welcome. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, hi everyone. So my name is John Paul. I'm a strategic account manager at Market Dojo. So I help our customers bring the solution online and get used to potentially in a lot of them a new way of uh, undertaking procurement activities. So this is going to be one of the case studies in which I've done that five years ago. Um, so I'll talk very briefly at quite a high level about what Imperial Brands did. So. Imperial Brands have been with us five years, and they are a global FMCG company. They have 30,000 employees around the world and revenue of 30 billion pounds. So essentially, they came to us because they had a, an S2P solution, and they found that it was causing a lot of issues. So 20% of documented issues were actually coming out of lack of visibility in the sourcing process. So the issue was the solution was very complex to use it was very difficult their users and their strategic sourcing um, employees were not actually making use of it so they were essentially paying for something that was just sitting on the shelf and then that was creating more issues that were started to back up quite a lot so they decided to go and look for something that maybe was away from the household brands and the big names 
um, that have you know been around for a very long time and they wanted to find something easy to use and that was straightforward. So one of my favorite quotes from um, the, the gentleman that actually implemented this across the entire company and led the implementation was that they had a tank that was you know sitting in their garage and every time they needed to use it it was very expensive it was incredibly complex there were buttons and switches and what the company needed was a four by four that was just you know press go drive from a to b to help their users actually do their job because it was taking more time than it needed to so with that we decided to um, explore how strategic sourcing and best of breed could um, replace their current s2p um, process within imperial brands so yep next slide sorry if we could move on to the next slide that'd be great max uh, max if we can move to the next slide we'll get there yeah okay well in the meantime what i can do i'll, I'll talk about it anyway um as we're waiting to get there so Essentially, what that looked like in terms of, I mean, it just has the figures that I'm about to talk about. So what it looked like is a six week implementation. We had 100 users around the world. Um, and, you know, that's in every region um, on every continent that were making use of our tool. And we found that we got a five times uptake in terms of people actually using the tool. 95% preferred using our tool. I mean, there was obviously 5% that didn't, but you know, not everyone's going to be happy. And then from there, we also had, they saw 6,000 times ROI with our tool. So our, our tool in general can be more affordable than a lot of these large solutions. But the main point and the focus of why their team found it so much easier is we have ready to go support for suppliers, for users. So they were no longer supporting their users um, and their suppliers that they were dealing with and going through the process because when you go into a, a solution like this you know you're always going to have questions and queries and i forgot my password will inevitably be the most common um support query that comes in so instead of you know strategic sourcing users dealing with this um we instead uh will, will kind of be that first line of defense to help um the, the, the users focus on things that are more crucial when focusing on sourcing. So, you know, making sure that they have the right certifications, making sure you've got the right queries, everything's been asked, all the right team members are involved rather than, you know, this is how you get a new password. This is how you get into the solution. Oh, you know, that's broken, et cetera. So um, that's where we um, started to drive a lot of change within that company um and so for imperial brands it's been fantastic um it's been a great journey thus far um and they were one of the first of many of these stories so when we started at market dojo we thought that you know we wanted to focus on really small procurement teams and now we've expanded out towards you know a lot of global companies around the world that are using us from you know toyota marriott hotels etc so it's been a, a great journey um, as you can see, some of those figures uh, are on there now, just in terms of that change pr in process. But, you know, um, phenomenal, phenomenal ROI, great usage across the business and, you know, people using it in. We, we've introduced so many languages because of them. So, you know, quite obscure languages to us anyway, with, you know, things like Turkish, um, Thai, Vietnamese, all this kind of stuff. A, a lot of that was driven by imperial brands and, and companies like them. That's most of it for me. Um, so what we can do is then jump on to Jesse, I believe. Thank you yeah, very thank you much, very much John. John. Okay, yeah. we have Jesse. Yeah. Jesse is with us. Yes. Hi, Jesse. Um, Hello. Hi. Can you hear us? Yes, yes, yes. I can hear you. All right. Hi, all. Uh, I'm Jesse, and thanks for inviting me for today's session. Uh, I'm from Swimman. I'm the director of finance and business analysis. And we've been uh, having this uh, journey with ASCA since 2021. That is how we started with ASCA. And let me give a little bit of uh, background about what is Swimman. Swimman Sarawak here, this is, we are the branch campus of Swimman Melbourne. And essentially Swimman Sarawak it is a 
joint venture between the Melbourne with the state government of Sarawak, Malaysia, from Malaysia. So with that, that's how we grow. And how do we come about looking into uh, what we call it as uh, embracing technologies for the pain point that we have? Initially, prior to 2021, we've been looking for, we know our pain point, one of the biggest pain point that we have, it is about procure to pay at that point, and whereby it's all, all our work lots has been done manually, 100%. Time consuming, I will have three, four dedicated staff every day, keying in, duplicating, filing, all these manual works has been done, okay? And not only that, all these data, in order for us to keep it, we will always keep it in an Excel form so that we have historical of the data. And from there, and as usual, we are an organization, an education organization owned by the state, and we have our protocol of whereby you have to approve for those that is doing procurement, you need to have delegation of authority to approve and everything. So with this, we will actually have to manually get people to physically sign on the paperwork. So with that, that will cause a lot of bottleneck. Okay, on top of that, vendors, okay, um, we will have vendors to whereby they, it takes a long time to onboard the vendors and so on. So this is why we decided that we need to actually, uh, the pain point here, we need to solve it, okay, once for all. And we have been looking into various uh, system, okay, a number of them, and it took us actually about one and a half to two years to, to, to really decide which are the system. Because essentially, Swimburn is kind of unique not many company or rather university okay actually has their procurement decentralized so it means to say every faculty admin unit or professional units they have their own team of special so-called specialists to do their initial groundwork for their purchases so because of this, it, it makes us a bit more unique as compared to other organizations that is decentralized. And essentially, it means to say we will need this system to be able to assess by the entire community of swimmen. Okay, this is one of the difficulty of finding a system that meets our requirement because all the system out there, a lot of time, it is based on subscription base, meaning to say per use base. But for ASCA, as in we are from finance, cost benefit will always be one of the things to look at beside, of course, the priority initially is to look into meeting our requirement. Is that they basically on subscription based purpose. So with that, that's where we actually decided on ASCA. One of it is because of that it is based on Sub, uh, document best number of document best that we use the more that we use the more that we have to pay and so on and so forth and this is in line with what we have because we believe that when there is a growth in business we should pay more we will get more we will incur more okay and we are able to pay more for it and with that what we have at this here is that our success story whereby we are able to actually decrease the processing time 75%, okay? So at this moment, at now, we have uh, improved since the last time from a nine days to about, uh, nine, 10 days to about uh, eight days. We are working towards having a turnaround of a seven days of processing time from issuance, okay? From issuance of PR to our PO. But of course, this, when we say the number of days is not working days is inclusive weekends, okay? Next time, next thing would be we are three times faster in our processing and we have cost saving of 80%. And with that, at this moment, the uh, what I call it as the culture 
that actually changed the entire culture of my procurement team whereby now they no longer do clerical stuff, clerical uh, work. Now they become what we call I call them as a full-fledged procurement specialist whereby they actually always provide becoming a consultant. They provide uh, what we call it as advisory, compliances, governance, and to ensure everything it is transparent, okay, which is really crucial for us because we are still a government link, government arm, so we need to comply to all this. Now, just to uh, additionally highlight, uh, just two weeks back, we just successfully actually uh, finance, Swimbun Procurement Finance, actually successfully upgraded our ESCA to uh, the latest one, the version from a version 200 to 292, I think, if I remember correctly. And with that, all this, we have done it in-house. Can you imagine, okay, that procurement finance able to do implementation without having our IT to be involved when it comes to our ESCA upgrading and so on. So this is the extent of the changes, change management that's been done for my team, whereby they now fully on the system without having to every time relying on supports, okay? We have our own team to support everything, except for, of course, anything that is technical that we look for, the ESCA support team or our own IT. So with that, it, it really changed how we do everything from a paper base to become now a specialist, to become a consultant, to take care of whatever that is required. And then from there, in the system, within the system, we are able to do tracking, analytical, and onboarding our vendor, okay? Onboarding our vendor. Previously, our vendor always email, a lot of time using email, all their invoices, physically send all their invoices. Now they can do it all in the system, okay? Through the ESCA system. So with that, this actually enhance visibility and ensure that payment will be on time, okay? And there will be less, okay, grievances. Not only that, I do think that um, for Swimman, as you just now saw, uh, saw Charlie's uh, presentation of the power couple, CFO and CPO, okay, in Swimman, it is very fortunate for us that from the onsets of the structure, it was organized that procurement be part and parcel of finance. So in that sense, it helps to move things easier, more seamless, and standardize, uh, standardization across and simpli simplicity that we've done on all the processes and operational operational process and processes, we are able to do it within our own, so-called, I would call it as my own backyard, meaning to say our own department. So it's easier than most that uh, it, the, the challenge is less in that sense, in that area, we have edge over it, okay? So I guess uh, this is one of the few things that I think I should be sharing also that we will also be looking into in the next few months to actually have our vendor management and e-expense management to be wrapped up. So that at the end of the day, we are looking into the entire chain of the source to pay of the ESCA to help us to have uh, centralized data of all our expenses in one area. Okay, so with this, all right. yeah. All right, thank you, JC. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, JT. This is great. Welcome. Okay, um, Charlie, do you want to um, uh, maybe we show, uh, we show the poll results for everyone to um, see? Um, yes, I think, uh, can, can we share the poll result? If you can comment on this, yeah. 
let's do that yeah all the above um wow doesn't show the number of votes no consuming. you need to show the results okay this is now the poll mm -hmm. hold on Danny, can you share the just share the results not the uh, the actual poll yeah Okay, hold on. Huh? We're gonna figure out. Anyway, we'll have a. Maybe we'll come back to that poll later. Uh, yeah, here you go. The poll is here. Okay. All right. So looks like if I just take a quick glance, uh, your biggest challenges or uh, your top challenges is actually uh, meaningful data, basically analytics. Yeah, there's 18 words there, uh, 16 words of everything else. So honestly, um is consistent what we are seeing in the market and talking to our prospect and assisting customers. These are basically the key pain point. Uh, one is, I'm quite surprised by the way, uh, time consuming manual data is, I think among the lowest here in terms of vote. Uh, maybe that give me a, a, a picture of uh, most of you here will have some element of automation or tools, uh, maybe not fully automated, but at least partially automated. Yeah. Um, so, yep, I think it's um, an industrial or the market trend. This is quite in line, not something that is uh, extra uh, skill or, or difference from that perspective. Yeah. So my conclusion is, guys, uh, you really need to uh, consider uh, the move into strategic sourcing, the move into, you know, having automation tools and AI is definitely uh, is going to be a big part of, of the automation drive. All right. Okay, great. All right. So we have an, a lot of questions. I would like to uh, take them now because uh, we're running out of time. Uh, yeah. So maybe uh, we'll, we'll get started with the questions and maybe the first one uh, is uh, this one. Uh, I think it's, it's it was probably for you, uh, Charlie. Uh, so okay. the question was, what are, what are the key considerations for organization in impact when implementing S, S2P solution compared to other regions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I think very good questions. Um, firstly, um, it depends on your organization setup. Uh, what we are seeing in from our customer base, at least a big part of them are multinationals. That means they may be present in multiple countries, not only just in a pack or cross a pack, but also perhaps the headquarters, let's say, is in Europe. So that also means you will have perhaps uh, a likelihood uh, multiple ERP system, right? So one of the considerations that we, when we actually successful onboarding any customers, we always ask what's the what's the key reason. So they are typically looking for solution that can work across multiple ERP, which is more agnostic, offers. Um, how do I say, uh, best practices, which our solution has embedded that, and be able to handle not only just uh, in terms of technicality, in terms of uh, ERP, the back end operation part of it, as well as languages, right? Because Asia is unique. We have almost every country have different language, right? So you will need to look for a solution that is perhaps uh, really agnostic across the board, but is also well ahead of the technology. That is something that Esker is proud of, right? You do not want to invest in something that is relevant today, but maybe not be so relevant in the coming next two to three years, yeah, with the changes in technology. So these are the key, I would say, attributes that organization, when they look for automation, identify that. Um, and I think Esker is very proud to say, uh, we only not only offer that roadmap for your growth, uh, but apart from S2P, we are also in the I2C. All right, so that really give you a seamless to really grow uh, into one single platform, right? Where your data is centralized, where we economies of scale, right? You really have a very cost effective uh, solution as well as a very interesting ROI. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I hope I have addressed that question from uh, that perspective. All right. yeah. uh, we have uh, a lot more questions. So let's, uh, let's jump right in. Okay. What are the yeah. different Thank automation conditions and well, outcome that uh, we report CFO? Okay. Yeah. okay. Next question. Different mm -hmm. uh, automation consideration and outcomes when procurement reports to C. Mm 
to CFO? Um, well, um, you would maybe like Jesse to can that? also comment on this. Yeah. I think yeah, yeah let's maybe, maybe, maybe I can give some insight because because essentially I'm from finance. Okay. Yeah, Charlie. Now, or JC, when, anybody? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll take over this question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When it comes to uh, uh, re procurement reporting to CFO, I think uh, my perspective is that uh, basically we are basically what we call it is the uh, procurement is like your front end. Okay. Your front end, that is where you, in order for you, for a uh, data or the starting yeah, of a ahead. transaction or cost to be yeah, yeah. incurred it, it will be have to be go through procurement but when it comes all the way if these two are of a different units by the time the cfo or the finance side know about it is a historical data already it's no longer it's no longer it become any rectification that you can do at that point in time it is a reactive is no longer a proactive when these two units is together you are able to proactive managing your cost and your activity and the direction of your spending so and because of that it finance have so-called i wouldn't say i would say a, a better leverage as compared to a operational because essentially operational are more towards getting things done operational activities finance side they are looking into cost benefit so that is how i see the difference between the two a lot of time i do agree that depending on the organization structure a c uh, a coo will be with procurement because essentially they will actually take care of also facilities and things like that so it sounds like they are part of it but if you look at it from cost perspective or value adding perspective in that case yeah it it will be very logical that procurement and cfo or rather the finance should be working very much hand in hand because effectively they have the same direction bottom line optimization activities yeah. thanks jesse for that uh, maybe i just offer a, a, a more neutral perspective or from a solution perspective uh, i think the the real difference is actually no impact to procurement yeah your roles your responsibility has not changed you are still focusing on sourcing what this bring is to break the silo uh, rather than uh, because procurement okay. is more on the upstream uh, right. front end. So apart from that ha happening and then uh, issues are fixed when it comes to finance, invoice are wrong, discounts are wrong and blah, blah, blah. So it's more actually aligning, breaking the silo. But essentially, the procurement role has not really changed. Just that now they are losing less transactional with automations, but they are more strategic. It's more value added into the organization, right? And that really brings job satisfaction. That really brings job uh, career enhancement. Because uh, myself, in my early days of my career, I don't like data entry. <laughs> Transactional, creating a PO, right? Uh, chasing papers, routing for papers for approval, right? So I would say it brings more uh, value to your work. Uh, it brings job satisfaction, right? And breaking the silos, ensuring less uh discrepancy and more alignment All right back to you max yeah happy to see more questions max is on a bit of a if delay like set, yeah. yeah yeah if you like some of the questions that you see Yes, so let's let's do it and uh, let's take the next one. Uh, uh, maybe we will take uh, this one. Uh, um. Yeah, maybe John. Okay, here's the next question. John will be for you. How to find new suppliers? 
John, I think you should take this question. Yeah, sorry. Let me just um. Anyone? So the process so of sourcing and looking, yeah, how yeah, how process of sourcing, yeah. Got you, got you. So the process is, in our experience, we certainly strive and push towards maybe it not being so automated because there's a lot of solutions that will offer a ready-to-go supplier directory. Um, the the issue with this is the accuracy of those is immensely difficult um to maintain so you know people leaving people changing over emails becoming void and then it all has to be done again so obviously luckily with ai data scraping techniques essentially we actually partner with specialists for it i mean we're listed in a few as you know all kinds of things from food vendors to uh, hotel suppliers because you know the accuracy is not there so with market dojo specifically we don't automate the process because we don't want to get it wrong and we you know um there's much bigger solutions than us that still get it wrong so we have a few partners that we integrate with um that essentially can provide and provision accurate data worldwide um and i think that's that's where the direction of sourcing new suppliers is going um thanks to ai I think uh, sourcing is one component where actually you issue the RFP, getting the codes, uh, getting the pricing and the selection. But the process to identify, uh, perhaps, uh, because there are ready solution that comes in marketplace. And as mm -hmm. one John I find out, some of the information are outdated, it's not maintained, right? And it could be very skewed to certain industry. So what we see is potentially this is something that it depends on your policy because you will have selection criteria for your policy. So uh, one other option is to use supplier management where you can build all these criteria. You need to be a number of staff. You need to have certain uh, certification, for example, and using supplier management. Yes, that's where you onboard new supplier, be able to evaluate supplier, uh, some other element, but it's not the ready pool of supplier that you can select, which we don't see. Uh, value neither the accuracy is in place so there are tools but there will be an element that um, is not automatically uh, given to you that if i in food industry here comes the two suppliers that you should be working we don't see that direction and we don't think that is the right direction yeah okay we have time for maybe one final question we have so many questions that we won't be able to uh, take all of them but there's a question about security and compliance, which I just displayed uh, on screen. Uh, can yeah. can any of you respond to this? Maybe I, I, I should do that. Now, um, Esker has, we are using Microsoft Azure. So I, on top, and this hybrid, the Microsoft Azure comes with a lot of certification and security governance. So that's one compliant that you can be assured of, right? On Esker's side, on our own solution that we put on Microsoft uh, Azure, uh, using their uh, uh, tower to really run the the offering, we have our own set of security compliance, and in the world today we have the highest, right? And we I'm proud to say we have never have any uh, cyber attack or ransomware attack today, right? We have a dedicated CI uh, C CISO team that is in compliance with all the European, and we have even have customers that are. A vendor or supplier to the US military. Imagine the governance and security requirement from the US military is, uh, I can tell you, you'll be surprised, it's so tight, so difficult. We pass through the evaluations. Yeah. So we have ISO, we have uh, SSAE, IASAE. And in between, when the data is exchanged in the cloud, is uh, come with uh, what I call the, the transaction embedment that without the code, you can't read those data. Yeah, and ultimately, those data belongs to you, our customers. Esca is just a service provider, but we provide all the firewalls, all the necessary, right? Uh, we have passed through all certification. Yearly, our platform is being tested by a secure, established international firm in terms of penetration, in terms of any gap, right? So uh, I would say we have one of the highest, if not the high, if not the only one that give you this security assurance. 
Yeah. Okay. So we will do have All documentation right. there as well. Yeah. This is great. Uh, thank you, uh, Charlie. Mm. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, so we had a lot of questions to take uh, them. So what I uh, I'd like to do is to I'd like to we're gonna copy those questions. Uh, we'll share those questions with the different speakers, and then when we send you a thank you email, we'll make sure that those questions are being answered. Uh, you guys can then have uh, the answers to your questions uh, about uh, this, this solution. I want to uh, I made a promise that we will uh, stop. Uh, Five. <laughs> The event because I know that some of you might have another event at the top of the hour. It's already five o'clock Hong Kong, Singapore. So uh, I want to thank all of you again for attending today's uh, webinar. We had a few technical uh, uh, for sharing your experience or with the solution as well. So thank you again for joining. Thanks, Charlie, uh, for sharing your insights. And again, we uh, we look forward uh, to see you next time. And all by right. the way, yeah, so, we have a, yeah. a workshop that you guys can see. Uh, yes. Yeah, Charlie, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, so uh, feel free to reach out to us. Um, I mean, from this, uh, hopefully you gain valuable experience and feedback. Uh, if you'd like to know more or to explore more, feel free to sign up for our, uh, our workshop. Yeah, this design exclusive for today's event, right? Uh, so I'm happy to talk to you more, right? To really explore more uh, with all of you. Thank you. Thanks again. Yeah, this is a special offer. Just uh, click on that uh, sign up today uh, button. Uh, thanks, SK, for you know partnering with us on this event. Uh, we'll follow up. We'll again share those uh, those questions, answers, and then uh, we'll uh, look forward again to see you at our next event. So thank thanks you, a lot, John, and we'll KB, see you next time. And thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thanks all. Thank you.